Hello, welcome to Thor Talk, the show all about Marvel's resident God of Thunder. On this episode of Thor Talk, we look at the often forgotten second appearance of Thor, which is also the first appearance of Jane Foster. In this issue, Thor fights the communist forces of the ruthless executioner. Will Thor succeed in bringing down this threat to democracy in this Cold War era comic? Let's find out on Thor Talk. I am Thor the Thunderer. Son of Odin, Prince of Asgard, and this world is under my protection! Journey into Mystery number 84 was a collaborative effort by Stan Lee, Jack Kirby, and Larry Lieber, among others, and was published in September of 1962. The story begins with a recap of the last issue, with Dr. Donald Blake discovering a cane, and when he strikes it, he becomes the mighty Thor. Donald Blake has returned to his practice in America, where he works with a nurse named Jane Foster. Blake has feelings for Jane, but thinks that she would never want to be in a relationship with a lame man, so he doesn't tell her how he feels. Jane actually does have feelings for Blake as well, but she's frustrated that he doesn't seem to care for her as much. Though, Blake will have much bigger things to worry about than relationship issues, as while he was away in Norway, fighting broke out in San Diablo between the Democratic faction and the pro-communist faction. The communists are led by a warlord known as the Executioner. He is called this because of how many he has executed by firing squad. Due to the fighting, medical supplies are scarce in San Diablo, so Donald Blake volunteers to go treat the people for diseases. Jane Foster decides to accompany him, but Blake is worried for her safety, and it turns out that he was right to be, as the Executioner has sent a squadron of jets to sink their ship. Donald Blake strikes his magic cane on the ground, and becomes the mightiest of all warriors, Thor. Thor spins his hammer and flies after the jets. With one swipe he demolishes one, and then whirls his hammer so fast that he creates an air pocket that destroys two more jets. Thor gives the last communist jet a taste from his hammer and turns back into Donald Blake. The pilots return to their leader to report their failure, and the executioner rewards his men with a death by firing squad. The warlord sends a battalion of men to finish off the American doctors, but Donald Blake stamps his cane twice, which causes a thunderstorm so great that the executioner's men are turned back. But the executioner has not given up yet, as he sends several commie tanks. Blake becomes Thor once again, who rushes into battle, ripping a tree up from the ground and using it as a lever to launch one tank crashing into another. For the final tank, Thor smashes into it with such force that the vibration causes the very molecules of steel to disassemble and fall apart. However, the communists have now captured Jane, and they tell Thor to leave, or she will die. They take her to the Executioner, who is infatuated with her. But then Blake arrives to demand her release. The Executioner is not turned by Blake's pleas. He seizes Blake's cane, saying that he won't be needing it after facing the firing squad. The Executioner offers to spare Blake's life if Jane agrees to marry him. But Blake then calls the Executioner out as a coward, challenging him to a fight. The Executioner approaches him angrily but Blake takes advantage of the situation, swiping his cane out of the Executioner's hands, and with a blinding flash of lightning, he becomes Thor. The Executioner orders his men to destroy him, but Thor throws his hammer at a supply tent, which drags the tent back before dropping it on top of the soldiers. But then, the Democratic faction arrives, causing the Communists to flee towards the mountain. But Thor sends a bolt of lightning, causing the volcanic mountain to erupt and the communists decide that capture is better than lava. However, as they return, they see that the executioner has taken their money and is attempting to desert them. They realize that he is really their enemy and that the Americans are truly their friends, so they kill him on the same execution wall that gave him his name. Jane is infatuated with Thor, but then Blake shows up and tells her that he was hiding behind the execution wall as Thor saved them and Jane wishes that Donald Blake could be brave and adventurous like Thor. But she realizes that this would be too much to hope for. So 
that was Thor's second ever appearance, an interesting look into Cold War era comics that clearly establishes the status quo that Thor would adhere to for the next couple of years. The status quo for Stanley Jack Kirby comics goes like this. Thor can pretty much take on anything in a fight, but his enemies can complicate matters by separating him from his cane or his hammer. On the romantic side of things, Blake loves Jane but won't say anything, Jane loves Blake but won't say anything, Jane also loves Thor as well, and Jane is constantly endangered and Thor must rescue her. Thor and Jane's early relationship is actually very similar to Superman's relationship with Lois Lane. This issue also reflects how Cold War era comics tackled communism, with Thor showing up to stop the communists only for them to also realize that the Americans were really their friends and communists are just greedy cowards. Despite all that this comic accomplishes, it is also often forgotten due to the fact that it is sandwiched in between Thor's first appearance in issue 83 and Loki, Odin, Heimdall, Balder, Tyr, and Asgard's first appearance in issue 85. Issue 84 is basically only notable for being Jane Foster's first appearance, which pales in comparison to the big notable first appearances that appear in the issue before and after it. Well, that's all for this episode of Thor Talk. If you want to keep up with and support Thor Talk, simply subscribe. Once again, I'd like to formally state that all art and video is owned by its suspecting companies, and I own none of it. With that said, see you next time on Thor Talk, where... You'll be